Welcome to Fusion 360. If you're an experienced SOLIDWORKS user, this quick overview will get you familiar with Fusion 360. We've also created a series of videos that you can watch in under 25 minutes. Those videos, developed by former SOLIDWORKS experts, are focused on the main differences between SOLIDWORKS and Fusion 360 in five key areas. And they'll get you up to speed in Fusion 360 as quickly as possible. So be sure to check those out after this overview. So let's get started. One of the most obvious differences between Fusion 360 and SOLIDWORKS is the ability to leverage the cloud for data, collaboration, and computing. When designs are created, they're stored in the cloud, and they can be accessed via native Mac or Windows applications, a web browser, or native apps for Android or iOS. Design teams can collaborate in the design process anytime on any device. This eliminates the need to VPN into a server and check out a file to make a design change or to simply view a design file. Right about now is when somebody asks, so I'll bring it up. What if I lose my internet connection whilst designing? No worries, we have an offline mode to let you keep working. Next, Fusion 360 is a product innovation platform that combines freeform design, 2D and 3D CAD, CAM, rendering, animation, and simulation into one product that updates automatically, and everyone is always on the same version. To put this another way, imagine SOLIDWORKS Premium, SOLIDWORKS Simulation, Mastercam, SOLIDWORKS Composer, EPDM, all wrapped into one. Here's another key difference with Fusion 360. Sketches, bodies, components, and assemblies all live in the same design. What that means is that you won't have to predetermine which is going to be a part file or a subassembly file. With Fusion, you model as many bodies as required for the design. Once you've determined how to best organize the bodies into components for parts lists or motion studies, you simply convert the bodies into components. It's that easy. In Fusion 360, the browser on the left side is similar to the assembly tree where bodies and components are stored. The timeline at the bottom is similar to the feature manager tree. This is time-based and it's a list of features in the order in which they were created. Yes, we can edit features early in the design process and roll the bar back and forth, whatever we need. And you can even play back the sequence and endlessly chastise your coworkers for their modeling practices. Assemblies are where most of us had the hardest time converting. And you probably will too, but it's definitely worth the time to understand the difference. First, forget all about mates and start to utilize joints and as-built joints. Rather than defining components by a face-to-face -face or edge-to-edge -edge or vertex-to-vertex -vertex relationships, two components are assembled with one joint to describe the desired mechanical motion. When components are designed in context to each other, rather than pulling them apart just to mate them back together, Fusion has what's called as-built joints, and they quickly define which motion is allowed for the component. See? I told you it would be worth it. Finally, when was the last time you saw a CAD company tell you what was coming in the next update? Go ahead and check out our roadmap and see what features will be included in the future updates of Fusion 360. Have an idea for a feature? Great. Submit a feature request online and track its progress. You can even ask your friends to vote for it. The product development team looks here first, and we put our efforts out there for everybody to see. Fusion 360 is clearly something different. Transitioning from SOLIDWORKS to Fusion is not an impossible task, and we recognize that we're asking you to write your name with your left hand for a little while. Now we're trying to help, so check out the next video on UI and navigation. This is a perfect place to get started, especially if you want your middle mouse button to work like it did in SOLIDWORKS.